hook it and cook it. From the catch to the kitchen, it's your front row seat to learn mouthwatering new ways to fix seafood. It's time for Hook It and Cook It. Welcome to Hook It and Cook It. I'm your host, Frank Willem. Today is all about oysters. Chef Jackie Seavey from the Island View Casino in Gulfport, Mississippi, is here with some mouth-watering recipes on how to prepare oysters Bienville and Rockefeller, and even some tips on how to char grill them. Let's get started by learning a little bit about how they make it from the ocean to your plate. Oysters grow in brackish water where they're harvested using tongs or by towing oyster dredges behind the boat. Once the oysters have been culled, they're sacked and offloaded at the dock. They then go by truck to your local seafood market. Like most seafood, oysters are best when eaten fresh. Many folks like them right out of the shell. Hey, uh, you want? The fresher, the better. That was really good. Oh, they really got strict about oysters, you know. People would open them in the backyards and stuff like that. Which there was no one ever got sick off of none of the oysters that people. Then I've done it myself. It got a little salt. A lot of the old people that made gumbo around the Christmas holidays, they wanted oysters right out the shell like this, you know because it was better flavor for the gumbo. Well, we got our oysters. When we come back, we'll learn how to shuck them and see how to make the magic sauce when they're char-grilled. Stay tuned for more Hook It and Cook It. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. Today's show is an oyster fest. Let's hit the kitchen with Chef Jackie to learn how to prime open the safe way. Here we have, these are uh, Louisiana oysters out of mm -hmm. Gulf of Mexico. Um, these are pasteurized and these are called gold bands. The company that does, uh, that farms these and process these um, right out of Homa, Louisiana, and they call them gold bands because of these plastic bands around here. What we're gonna start with, we're gonna do uh, oysters Rockefeller, oysters Bienville, and uh, the char-grilled oysters that are so uh, very popular here on the, on the Gulf Coast. Oh yeah, I love those. So what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna take the oyster knife and we're just gonna put it underneath the band and we're just gonna pop off that band. Uh, you have bandages around when I plunge the uh, knife into yeah, my- Yeah, I have, okay. uh, the paramedics are waiting outside good, good, just in good. case. And right. um, so you just pop that off. Okay. The safest way to do it is just to put it on here and you wanna, I'm gonna do one first. Okay. Um, I've seen people hold them like this and stab themselves uh, and being not being very careful, but if you, Take the towel and use it and to pin it down. Uh -huh. And then you take your knife and you get right into this little notch right here. You'll feel it. And if you just kind of twist your hand a little bit, um, just twist your, you can, you can feel it. Yeah, there we Pop go. Pop it. And that was actually kind of hard, but. Uh, okay. <laughs> and then there's a little muscle that it's attached and you'll slide in there and you'll just cut that muscle right okay. off. Okay, well, give it a try here. There you go. All righty. Wow, you're natural. Mine came off right there. Yeah. And... Got a little bit of mud there, and then there's a little muscle just kind of, there you there go. go. Okay. Okay. So Alrighty. it just, uh, you know, these are actually easier to open than West Coast oysters. West Coast oysters, um, some of them have their, their shape. You can't even tell where the little notch is. All right, I got the hang of okay. it. I haven't drawn blood yet anyhow. Okay. But if you use your towel, you'll, you know, that's the safer way if you want to be safe. But, there you go. There we go. Wow, that's a nice one too. That's a, yeah, juicy one there. Okay, and then we wanna just kinda keep, keep it setting up right so that the oyster liquor doesn't come out. <clears throat> so while you do that, I'm gonna go ahead and make the garlic butter since we're right here. The garlic butter is the magic sauce for the char-grilled oysters. Now, do you notice a lot of difference in oysters from different places as far as the char-grilled? The um, taste, I mean? Char-grilled char is, is a big thing down here. Um, uh, especially in New Orleans, they just do the garlic butter the, with the Parmesan cheese and it's done, it tastes really good on our grill because we have pecan wood grill. We have pecan wood that's local, the guy brings it every month or every two, uh, every two, two weeks. But um, I'm gonna make this garlic butter real quick and this is about, uh, a stick and a half of butter. And then I just have uh, three tablespoons of garlic. Uh, the same on white wine. The juice of one lemon. 
the, uh, the, the zest of lemon. Just a little pinch of uh, salt and white pepper. Splash of hot sauce, because that's what they do down here. And some Worcestershire sauce and some fresh parsley. And you just want to make sure that your butter is already room temperature and soft. And one of these, if you don't have a Hobart, that's fine. You can use these little handy dandy mixers. And you just beat it. Normally you would just, you know, have it really paddle, uh, paddled nice and smoothly and then we, we usually use a big mixer. So how's that? Wow, he's already... Uh, there we go, huh? <laughs> no, no holes in he's my hands there, see there? No holes in your hands. So we just want to keep beating the um, butter until it's smooth. And this butter is just a little cold because I have a draft. But I have a finished butter right here and it'll be nice and smooth like this. And it's best to do it the day before because the garlic flavors and the wine will set in and um, it'll be excellent on the grill. Stay tuned for more Hook It and Cook It. I have some white wine. This is about um, half a cup of white wine. Any particular type or does it really matter? Not cooking wine because cooking, <laughs> if, you can, if you'll drink it, cook with it. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. Well, Jackie, we got the oysters open now. What's what's the next step? What, what are we doing here? Okay, we're going to make two types of toppings. The first one we're going to make is a uh, bien bill. We're going to make the bien bill. Some so more butter. Butter's got, always uh, good. Yeah, about three tablespoons of butter right there. Now, um, normally we would use about two cups of packed sliced button mushrooms or cremini mushrooms. Uh -huh. What I've done to speed it up a little bit is I went ahead and pre-sautéed off these mushrooms. Okay. It, it just saves in time. So normally you just sauté those in, in butter as well, right? N normally, uh, if they were raw, you yeah. would just put them right in here and you would sauté okay. them off. And like I said, I sped it up a little bit and it does speed up the process a little bit. You know, mushrooms take a little while for that water yeah. to cook out. So um, I'm cooking the shallots first, and then I'm gonna do celery, and what I usually do is I cook the harder vegetables first. About so, how much celery is that, roughly? Um, that's about one very long uh, rib of celery, and I like the leaves because I think they taste very good, so I include some of the leaves oh, okay. in that too. Okay, that's a good idea. Um, which is about a quarter cup uh, minced. Okay, about, all right, okay? all right. Um, uh, No, a quarter to a half a cup minced. Um, this is bell pepper. It's about a, a quarter of a large bell pepper, seeded and veined. Okay. And this is about a quarter cup because bell pepper is very, very strong. So you don't want to overpower it with too much. No, you don't want to overpower okay. it. And they call it the Trinity. The, that's what people call it. The and, three uh, of those together. The three of those and together. Celery and bell pepper. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you just you just sweating it. Okay. And then you're going to add some. This is about a two to three cloves of garlic, medium size. Okay. okay. So, just kind of, we're just sweating that off a little bit. Okay. So, once you got that going, I have some white wine. This is about um, half a cup of white wine. Any particular type or does it really matter? Not cooking wine, because cooking, <laughs> if, you can, if you'll drink it, cook with it. So you, you know, the cooking so wine has salt in it, doesn't it? Yes, yeah. it's terrible. I don't even know why they call it cooking wine, but it's horrible. But if you'll drink it, then you should cook with it, okay? I read one time it was cooking wine. They put salt in it so the chef wouldn't drink it. <laughs> what I did was I put the wine in, but I pulled it off just in case to, it you know, flames, flames up. up. Okay. But I just, that's just a precaution. Okay. But uh, I don't know. I, I like to, have, when I'm at home, I like to drink beer or wine when I'm cooking because when I'm happy, the food is happy, so, you know. <laughs> my husband knows it all too well. So. I got some shrimp stock right there. All righty. Anyway, and this is about a, a half a cup of heavy cream. Okay. okay. It's very rich, okay. You got Heart cream, healthy, right, heart healthy. Butter. <laughs> <laughs> all the so, things that make it this, taste good, right? This is not diet, you know. So anyway, I'm going to add a uh, half a cup of heavy cream to that. And we're going to bring that up. Um, so you see it's boiling right now. So mm -hmm. about this time, 
you know, it's boiling. Do you worry about scorching it? Or is it? It's not going to, well, it will scorch if you leave it on there, but what we want to do is just reduce it down a little bit. So just, Get some of the liquid out of it. Yeah, we just want to reduce some of that, that stock and that cream, just reduce it down a little bit. Um, but uh, in the meantime, so you see it's coming to a boil. And if you let this boil, it's going to boil up and it's going to boil over, so don't walk away. Okay. And these and shrimp are already peeled and deveined oh, and yes. so heavy? Yes. Four ounces of peeled, uh, pe these are not deveined, these are puds, these are peeled, undeveined. Okay. okay. Um, and then we're going to add the shrimp to that. And it's only going to take a minute for those shrimp. It's already to looking cook. delicious, I'll tell you that. Okay. But uh, it's only going to take a minute. Uh, while that's going, I'm going to speed it up and I'm going to add Parmesan and fresh parsley. Okay. okay. And obviously, fresh parsley chopped up is much better than the, the oh, stuff you yeah. buy in the store you that's already in the that bottle, right? Yeah, I don't like that bottled stuff. Okay. It's yucky. Okay. So at this point, we're going to do a, a little splash of hot sauce, some Worcestershire, a little splash. Okay. I um, want to tighten this up so I have some blonde roux. Blonde roux is equal parts uh, fat in flour. Um, so whatever, you know, butter butter or oil you can use. You want but to this, use it. Yeah, okay. but this is butter in all-purpose flour, equal parts. And I cooked it out, don't have any color. You just make a, you can buy it in a jar. Okay. And then um, we got a little bit of Cajun seasoning. That's about a teaspoon of Cajun seasoning. And is that then, like Tony Sachets or something like that? Tony's or? is very salty. So you but, avoid, okay. But I, I like um, I like Paul Prudhomme's myself. Oh, okay. And then to finish it off, when you when it comes to a boil, you're gonna just whisk in a little bit of egg yolk. Stay tuned for more Hook It and Cook It. If I did like this, we're gonna, it's gonna flame up. So I do it safely. I remove the pan. Okay. Because I don't want people to burn themselves. Okay. And now, pour I appreciate it in you there. not setting me on fire and too. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. All okay. right, we got the oysters Bienville ready. Now, mm -hmm. what are we about to do next? This okay. is the third dish, right? Yes, this is the last dish. Um, we have three tablespoons of butter. We have uh, three, two to three shallots in there, depending on the size. We're gonna saute those up a little bit. Uh, we don't want to brown them. We just want to sweat those. And once again, okay. real finely, really finely chopped, finally, right? Finely, finely chopped. All right. Okay, now, this is, uh, you, you should use Pernod, but this is actually an anisette liqueur. Okay? Oh, okay. So if I did like this, we're gonna, it's gonna flame up. So I do it safely, I remove the pan. Okay. Because I don't want people to burn themselves, okay? And I pour appreciate it in there, you not setting me on fire, too. And though. it will flame. Um, I forgot the garlic, so garlic was supposed to be More garlic, there, so. okay. Shallots, garlic first. About how much garlic then, was that? Um, that's uh, three, three cloves. Oh, okay, three great, cloves. great. Okay. And then um, reverse that step. Okay. okay. All right. So um, while that's doing, I'm going to go ahead and add some heavy cream. This is about a, a, a half a cup of about heavy a half cream. Half a cup of heavy cream. We're going to let okay. that reduce a little bit. Okay. That alcohol is going to burn off. Usually it would ignite. And just okay. leaves a flavor behind, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And then while I'm doing that, I'm going to go ahead and add um, that's a quarter cup of Parmesan cheese. Okay. A little dash of hot sauce, not too much. A little dash of Worcestershire. So a lot of and commonality in the ingredients between the two dishes, isn't mm -hmm. there? Yes, they're very similar. Um, right here, I have um, spinach. You can use frozen spinach, but this is uh, blanched spinach that I squeeze and I minced very, very fine. Once this comes to a boil and it starts to thicken up, um, we're going to pull it off the heat, we're going to add the spinach, and then it'll be thick, and then we're going to top the oysters. Okay. So while that's going, um, off to the side, you're going to take panko breadcrumbs, melted butter, and uh, Parmesan cheese, and then you're going to make the topping. You just mix it all together, and then we're going to take this topping, and we're going to top these oysters. It's the same topping for the Bienville and the Rockefeller. Okay. Okay. So you want a nice crunchy topping. Okay. So I'm just topping both of these. This is the Rockefeller. This is what this is going to be. I'm just trying to get it to the point to where it's going to be. I'm just speeding it up a little bit. And you'd already put the oysters <laughs> uh, on the Bienville there. That's the Bienville these are the, mix that we made earlier, right? These are those professionally shucked oysters <laughs> that um, you can come here and work at the steamer <laughs> if you'd like, you know. 
I don't so. think I can keep up with your pace. <laughs> okay, so those are ready for the oven. If this is too loose, you can take a little bit of that blonde roux and you can add it to it. Um, but, but in the end, you're gonna remove it from the heat once it's nice and thick, okay? You're gonna add the fresh spinach. And then you're just gonna squeeze some fresh lemon juice on there, okay? And you just, you know, we got that beautiful green color. Oh, yeah. And it's going to cook again. So we don't want to cook the, the spinach to death, OK? So you just kind of mix it up, get all the ingredients melted, mm -hmm. and then because you're going to bake it, right? Yeah. OK. So this will, you know, you put it off to the side. You can make this ahead of time. And you just take these, and you just pop them in the oven. And they'll be ready in about five to seven minutes. Tell me about this grill okay. now. OK. This is a pecan wood grill. Um, this is called an Aztec grill, and it's strictly um, wood, it's wood fire. This is like cooking on a campfire. What I did was I just uh, put that garlic butter, mound it on there, just lots Ooh, of yeah, garlic butter. Good. You can set this up ahead of time. If you want to have a barbecue at your uh -huh. house, you can pre-shuck, do this all ahead of time and everything, and then just go ahead and set them right on your grill. And you can do a gas grill if you don't happen to have a wood grill? You can use a gas grill. Um, you don't but get that the, good pecan smell, though, right? Yeah, you don't get Unless you have some of those chips. You can always get one of those little boxes, okay, or you yeah. can uh, take wood chips, soaked wood, wood chips, and you can put it in an aluminum foot pouch and just poke holes on them and put you it right on top of your, and you'll get that smokiness but, yeah. if you wanted to do that on your, on your guys. Now you can see uh, the butter is loving the wood. You can see it start to grill. It, it just, all that butter's hitting that oil. Oh, that looks Started great. That, and it smells good too. And these are done pretty much. Just you'll see you'll see a little start they'll start to bubble. See how they kind of brown and all that butter is melting on there. And then when the cheese is melted, I mean you don't really want to cook it to death because the more you cook an oyster, the oyster is just going to be it gets tough, right? And it's tiny. Yeah. It goes from this to this. So you can uh, make a lot of people angry by overcooking their oysters. So as you can see, we got this fire really going, so it's not going to take any time at all. And we're out about a minute out on these oysters. You see all this char right along the edge? Oh, man, that's, that see, looks look fantastic. How, oh, yeah. How plump and juicy. Don't cook them to death, you know? They don't need to be cooked to death. People eat them raw. They're fine. <laughs> they're just enough <laughs> they're to get everything melted. And, yeah, yeah, melted. And we don't want to lose any of that flavor, yeah. butter. Don't, don't oh, lose yeah, the garlic butter. butter. You know, and believe me, these shells are so hot that it's going to finish melting the butter. Absolutely. And then okay, you just want to squeeze it with some lemon juice, okay? A little bit of fresh lemon right on top before you go out. But these shells are hot enough. We're, we're about to go and sure. share these Sure, let's up, go so. try them. Well, gosh, Jackie, I tell you, the, the smell of the pecan wood, the mm -hmm. char-grilled oysters, the butter and the garlic was had me going crazy, and it looks even better than I imagined. So what do we do now? Are we ready to taste it? We need to tear it up. Tear it we up. OK, tear it let's up. try this out. I eat with my nose. Mm. 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 Lemony, very garlicky. Very good. Mm. Char-grilled oysters. You can mm -hmm. taste the pecan wood. It's excellent. Mm -hmm. They all look good. Now, what about mm. the wine you chose in here? I went with a um, Moscato. I, I like sweeter wines. I don't like them very dry, but that's a personal thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I ended up going with this um, Castello de Poggio that they have here at the Beach Boulevard steamer. And it's, and it's kind of it's sweet, but it's uh, it goes really good with the seafood. Oh, it, 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 it accents the, uh, the charcoal oysters really well. Excellent. You so, did an outstanding job. What oh, can I say? Well, thank you. It was Anyone fun. Anyone that, um, that wants to come here can get these, but now mm -hmm. we're going to let menu. them be able to cook them at home, too, right? Yep. You can do them for parties. You can set them up the night before and then just pop them in the oven or put them onto the grill. It's a, you'll, you'll, if you do these on the grill, you'll have everybody hanging around the grill. <laughs> well, As thanks. if they don't already hang out there. So, <laughs> you know. Well, thanks so much, Jack. You did an outstanding job. We really appreciate okay, it. Okay, well, thanks. Thanks, thanks for uh, shucking my oysters for me. <laughs> well, you learned how to make oysters Bienville, Rockefeller, and char-grilled oysters. I want to thank Chef Jackie C.V. from the Island View Casino in Gulfport, Mississippi for showing us how it's done. And remember, you can find the recipe on our Facebook and webpage. Join us next time for another delicious edition of Hook It and Cook It.